Now I'm going to show you several skin smoothing techniques. And the first one I'm going to show you is the easiest by far, and certainly the quickest. However, it's not necessarily the best. But if you want a quick result, then this is probably the one to use. Firstly, we need to duplicate our retouch layer. So with our retouch layer selected, we'll just hit Command J, and we'll rename this Skin Smooth. Now I'm just going to zoom in on the face so I can see exactly the result that I'm getting. So Command Space Bar, click and drag over the face, maybe a little bit closer. Now we want to blur this layer, so we come up to Filter, Blur, come to Surface Blur, and our Surface Blur option box will pop up right here. We have Radius and Threshold. Now the Radius specifies the size of the area sampled for the blur, and the Threshold controls how much the tonal values of neighbouring pixels must differ from each other before it's included in the blur. And so what you have to do is experiment with these with the radius and threshold levels until you end up with the amount of blur that you're after. Now, I've already experimented with this image and I know that I like the figures that we've currently got in there, which is a radius of five pixels and a threshold of 10 levels. And you'll see that what's happening is these large tracts of skin are being blurred. However, these areas where there's a closer dynamic difference between the colors of the pixels, they're being left alone to a degree. So I'm going to click OK. Now this isn't the result that we really want because although it's done a pretty good job of not blurring say the eyelashes too much and other facets of the face, we still have lost quite a lot of detail. I'm going to zoom in right in on the eye and I'm going to switch this skin smooth layer off before and after. Now we still have the eyelashes but some of the details of the eye have been left out and as well as that we're losing detail in the hair. So I'm going to pan out a little bit more, Command minus, and we need to create a mask to cover this layer and just gradually paint in the areas that we want to have smoothed. And the quick way of doing that is just to hold down the Option key while clicking on the Add Layer Mask, and it will add a layer mask filled with black, which we then can play around with and gradually paint into. So I'm going to get onto my Brush Tool, and the quick key for the Brush Tool is, the, is by hitting the B key. And the areas that I'd, that I'd like to smooth are predominantly around the forehead here and on the cheeks, just to soften the pores a little bit. And there are some very fine hairs on the cheeks, which we need to soften as well. So we'll start off by fixing those and then we'll move on to the rest of the body. So we currently have our default foreground and color options up here, which are black and white. And if you happen to have already another color on there, let's say if I click on the foreground color and bring up some random color like uh, magenta, for example. Now, because I have my mask selected, it's only giving me black or white or shades of grey option for painting into that mask. So I'll just click off that and click onto the main image here. And I'll just select a random colour once again. Click OK. And I have magenta. Now if I want to bring up my default black and white options in the future, all I have to do is hit D and it'll change these foreground and background colours to black and white. And to flip between the two, depending on which color you want to paint with. In this case, say I want to paint with white, then you just hit the X key, and you can, by hitting the X key, you can flip between the foreground and the background, just like that. Now, I want to get back onto my mask, so I'll select it. Now, remembering I need to bring up my black and white default keys, so I'll hit D, and white is current my, currently my foreground color. And I want to change the opacity of my brush because I, I don't want to paint 100% of this surface blur in. I just want to gradually paint it in and be delicate with it. So I'm going to choose an opacity of 30% by hitting the 3 key and reduce my brush size a little bit by hitting the left bracket key. And I'm going to paint some of this white into the mask here, as I'm doing right now. And already you can see that what's happening is, is that blurred skin is starting to come through now. And so I've got to be quite selective where I paint this, this surface blur mask. And primarily, I want to make sure that I avoid areas such as the eyebrows, because you don't want to paint over them. And I'm just going over the cheeks, the pores, sections of the skin, which such as the fine hairs on the cheeks here. Areas where the pores are just generally a little too prominent and also where there might be the odd wrinkle or two which could be a little softened a little bit. There are some very fine hairs underneath the lip here and some sections of the 
chin which can be softened as well. And that's done a pretty good job so far. So I'm going to continue running through the body and soften those areas which can do with a little bit of uh, where the, the detail is a little too harsh and distracting and which could do with a bit of softening. For example, the, the texture of the skin on Rebecca's uh, chest here can, uh, can be softened a tad. Down here, just in the middle of the cleavage. If you're feeling a little impatient, you can increase the brush, you can increase the opacity of your brush. But I like to uh, work fairly gradually and not be too impatient. However, I'm working quite quickly for the just for the purposes of this tutorial. And you can see some, there's some rough skin here on the other side of the bikini top. There are some fine hairs on the on uh, Rebecca's left for, forearm here, which we can paint over. Now the beauty of the surface blur is that it generally leaves edges alone. So it's actually quite safe to paint over the the edges of the arm here without worrying about that you're going to be adding blur to the edges. Now here we are at the tummy where we have all these really fine hairs. And I mentioned that we can get rid of these with these with various skin smoothing techniques, including this one. And just for the purposes of expediency, I'm not going to rely on a low opacity brush. I have the opacity right up here at 100%, simply because I know it's going to take 100% opacity in order to remove all these fine hairs. So I'm just going to brush this pure white over the mask, just to get rid of all those fine hairs. And you'll see that there are some little fine hairs which are still remaining. However, we can come back to them and uh, remove them a little bit later on. Now that I've gotten rid of the worst of the hairs there, I can safely come back down in, a, in my opacity and once again become a little bit more gentle with, with how much of the surface blur I'm bringing in. So I'll hit three to bring my opacity back down to 30%, increase my brush size a little bit, and continue running over the sections of the skin. Okay, here we are at the legs, and, and as I mentioned before, we have all these fine little pores which we need to get rid of. And I'm going to be a little tactless here, and once again bump up my opacity right up to 100%, and just brush my surface blur in quite harshly, just to get rid of them fairly quickly. So I'm going to hit double zero to bring my brush opacity up to 100%, and paint white pure white directly into the mask in order to uh, quickly, very quickly get rid of all those hairs and fine pores. And you can see that those pores have just completely disappeared very quickly. And I've been very careful not to run over the toes with the brush because I want the detail of the toes to remain there. Command minus, just pan out a little bit. And we'll have a quick gander at what we've uh, done so far. Command zero to fit to window. Now to quickly recap what we've just done, I'm going to zoom in on certain areas and uh, just give us a quick before and after and show what's been achieved with this surface blow. I'll zoom in a bit closer on Rebecca's face and before and after. And that's a much better result. Panning out again, zooming in on the uh, cleavage, before and after. Scrolling down to the tummy, before and after. And all those fine hairs have disappeared, except for a few random ones here and there. Coming down to the legs, and all those pores and fine hairs have disappeared. Now there's one step you should always take when you're smoothing skin. And that is what normally happens when you're smoothing something is that in your efforts to get rid of the detail that you don't want, you end up creating an artificial look to the skin because it suddenly becomes devoid of those tiny details and grain which you need in order to keep skin looking realistic. So the next very important step we're going to do, and we're going to do this with all skin smoothing techniques, is to add a little bit of noise to those areas that we've smoothed. And it is in fact a very easy thing to achieve. So I'm going to zoom in on Rebecca's face, command space bar, click and drag 
I'll zoom right in so we can see the details. Now if I do a quick before and after, before and after, we've got rid of those pores and details that we didn't really want. However, the skin's looking a little artificial because it's lost a lot of the, the natural grain that skin normally has. Now I need to create a new layer and fill it with gray. And the quick keys for that are Command Shift N, which will bring up our new layer options. I'm going to rename this layer Noise. And under Mode, I scroll down to and click Overlay. And that'll give us this option to tick, which is to fill this layer with the 50% gray. So I'll tick that, click OK, and it will create this new layer, which is, if I option click on the eye icon right here, you can see that it's just a layer filled with gray. But because it's on an overlay mode, it allows us to see the image underneath. But it will display whatever texture we add to this layer. So I'm going to come up to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. Under Distribution, I have Uniform ticked, and if I zoom in just a little bit closer with the Command Plus key, you can see that if I switch off my Preview button here and switch it back on again, we can see that all of a sudden grain has been added to, added to the skin. And I've currently got the amount set to 4%, however that's a little bit harsh at the moment, so I just want to bring that down a tad, because for this image we don't need this much grain in the skin, as there wasn't that much grain to start off with. So I'm going to bring this amount down, I'm going to type in 2 and see what the result is there. Do a quick before and after, switch off the preview, switch back on again, and there's just this little element of grain which has been added back to the skin. So I think 2 is pretty good. And I'm going to click OK. Now what's happened is that noise layer is affecting the entire image, even those areas that we haven't blurred at all. And that's one thing that I don't want to do. I only want to affect those areas that we've blurred. So, so the quick way of applying this noise layer just to those areas that we've affected is to command click on the skin smooth mask here, just like this, and it's selected those white areas in that mask. If I option click on that mask, you can see that that's essentially what we're looking at here. That's what we've painted in. So I'm going to option click, the, click that again just to get back to my image. Reselect my noise layer, and if I click add layer mask, it's going to apply an exact copy of my skin smooth mask onto that noise layer. So what's in effect happened is that new grain that I've created is only going to be affecting and sitting on top of those areas of the surface blur which I've painted in. And now the effect is very subtle. If I switch off these two layers here, there's the original before the surface blur. Here's where I've smoothed the skin, and here's where I've added a little bit of grain. Now the effect's very subtle, but that's what you need to do in order to ensure that the new skin you've created looks realistic. Command zero to fit to window. Now the main downfall with using the surface blur technique for skin smoothing is if I zoom in on the stomach, for example, we can see that there are these slightly blotchy areas which the skin smooth can't get rid of by itself. What has to be done in this instance is that we have to create a new layer on top of everything that we've done, get it onto our stamp tool by hitting the S key, and if I increase my brush size using the right bracket key, we have to use our blemish reduction or wrinkle reduction technique using the clone tool in order to soften these blotchy areas and smooth them out a little bit such as this white patch right here. If I just option click just underneath it and run over that, we can soften those blotchy areas. And we have to do that for all over the skin to fix it up. And that's the reason why that surface blur te technique is the quick fix for smoothing skin. And so I won't be doing that right now because next I'll be showing you a couple of new techniques, Command Zero to fit to window, which are a little bit more time consuming but you have much more control over the final result. And that's how you smooth skin using Surface Blur.